So Parallels 20 has just been released, and this is by far the best way to run Windows on an Apple Silicon M series Mac. And yes, there are virtual machine alternatives like VMware Fusion and UTM, but Parallels is Microsoft's officially supported way to run Windows on a Mac. And unlike those other methods, Parallels is so much easier to use. It can download and install Windows 11 ARM in a single click. And Parallels also comes with far superior Windows game support. You can connect Bluetooth controllers, you can download games through the Microsoft Store and make use of advanced Windows applications, integrating them seamlessly into the macOS desktop using coherence mode. The new version of Parallels 20 comes with the latest updates for macOS Sequoia and support for Windows version 24H2. It also unlocks multiple new AI tools, including the Direct ML API, allowing users to take advantage of Microsoft ML and ONNX runtime frameworks on a Mac. Now, in terms of gaming, Parallels has some decent Windows game support, but it's been overshadowed by crossover. However, don't discount Parallels, which can not only run many DirectX 11 games, but also outperforms crossover on 32-bit games like Fallout New Vegas, Black Mesa, Batman Arkham Origins, as well as fan games like Castlevania revamped and Bloodborne PSX. And it's the best way to run Minecraft Bedrock, the Microsoft Store version of the game, which is the only way to play with other console Minecraft players. So in this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to get a whopping 25% off discount off the pro version of Parallels, or you can test it out with a fully featured 14 day free trial. I'll also be showing you how to install and optimize Parallels, pair controllers and install Windows games and applications and get the most out of Windows 11 ARM on a Mac. So the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and click the link at the top of the video description. Every single purchase that's made after clicking this link is going to help to support this channel and the content that I create. So once we click on the link and click go to site, so here we're going to be taken to the Parallels website and what we're going to do is click the buy now button and if we scroll down here we'll be able to make a selection between the standard edition and the pro edition. So at the moment I recommend downloading the pro edition which unlocks additional features and it's actually going to be cheaper than buying the standard edition at the moment especially because it comes with a really nice 25% off discount. So here we're going to press the buy now button and here you can see the 25% discount has already been applied. If you're watching this in the future, what you can do is to enter the coupon code AppleWiki10 and you can get a discount from there as well. However, if you are interested in just trying this out for the very first time, you can actually just go ahead and use the free trial. You can click the try free button and here we can make full use of a 14 day free trial here. Just enter your email address, agree to the terms and conditions and press the submit button. If you do decide to make a purchase eventually, remember to use my link in the description to help support this channel. So here we'll be taken to the Parallels trial screen here. I'm going to click on download Parallels desktop and that started the download process. So all we need to do now is to minimize and then we're going to go ahead and install Parallels. So click on finder here, click on downloads and then we're going to find the install Parallels desktop DMG. We're going to double click and then we're going to double click on install Parallels desktop. Click on the open button here and then click allow and then we're going to accept the end user licensing agreement. Click on enable and here we can choose whether we want to submit data, click enable or disable and now it's downloading the Parallels software. So just wait for that to finish. Here it's now saying it's installing. And here we're going to enter our password. So just type that in. Here it's initializing. So here it's going to ask us to create a new virtual machine. And you can actually go ahead and download a multitude of different operating systems, including different versions of macOS, Ubuntu, Fedora Linux, Debian, Kali Linux, etc. However, today what we're going to be interested in is downloading and installing Windows 11 ARM. So in order to do this, all you have to do is to click this button here, get Windows 11 from Microsoft, and then press continue. Continue. Here it's saying download and install Windows 11. We're going to click install Windows here. So this is very easy to do. It's a one click process, far simpler than you doing this on VMware Fusion or on UTM. Parallels is going to handle the download and installation of Windows 11 ARM. No other steps are required. So here it's saying it's validating. So now what we can do is click try free for 14 days here. We're going to go ahead and activate a free trial. So here it's saying the trial period ends after 14 days. Here we're going to click continue trial. So this is Windows 11 an ARM operating within this little window here. And now this is going through the standard Windows setup. So no intervention is required on the user end. This is what you'd normally see if you were installing Windows 11 on bare metal. Now it's saying getting ready. Here it's saying just a moment. It's saying here the PC will restart, but it's just a virtual machine that's going to restart. Here it's restarting. And now we're booting into Windows 11. So here we're going to allow these permissions by clicking allow here and then allow here. And now it's saying the installation is complete. Click to continue. So here what we're going to do is to accept the Windows licensing agreement. Press accept. And now it's saying here that Windows 11 has successfully installed. It is warning us that we need to activate our copy of Windows 11. I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later in this video. 
The first thing that you might want to do is to full screen this. So you can go ahead and click the green button here and it's gonna full screen the virtual machine and it takes a few moments to resize. And what I'm gonna do is right click on the wallpaper and then click on display settings. I'm just gonna change the scaling. So I like this at hundred percent. So if you want to be able to put this back into a window, all you gotta do is on the keyboard, press control and option at the same time. And then you'll be able to toggle the ability to open up this menu bar at the top. And you can exit full screen and come back into this window. So just remember control and option allows you to release your mouse from the virtual machine window. So another thing we wanna do is to configure the virtual machine because we're on default settings at the moment. We can click on the start menu here and then shut down fully. And then once that has fully shut down, it's gonna go into the control center here. And now we can configure it. So click on this cog icon and then click on CPU and memory. So this has automatically determined the number of CPU cores and the amount of RAM that's allocated to this virtual machine. But if we click on manual, then you could actually change this to something a bit more substantial. So for example, ideally you want half of the CPU cores allocated to the virtual machine. For example, I'm using the M3 Max with 16 CPU cores. So in that case, I would want to allocate eight CPU cores to the virtual machine. And ideally you want about half of the RAM as well. So I've got 40 gigabytes of RAM. So I'm going to put 20 gigabytes of RAM for the virtual machine. If you're using something like an M1, then you only have eight CPU cores Cores, so you only want half of that, you have four CPU cores there. And then let's say you've only got eight gigabytes of RAM, you only want four allocated to the virtual machine. So make sure you play around with this. You should try and optimize this to take advantage of your machine as much as possible, especially considering that memory is also allocated to graphics memory as well. You want as much RAM as possible in order to get the best performance for gaming in particular. So first thing I'm gonna do is talk about activation. I'll click on the start menu here. I'm gonna type in the word activate, and then you can click on this to look at activation settings. And it says here that that this is not active at the moment, you can go ahead and buy a product key if you want to. So I actually talk about whether you need to buy a product key in a different video. What I'm gonna do is leave a link in the description for my video here. It basically talks about whether you actually need to buy a Windows 11 license in order to run a virtual machine on Parallels and what some of the cheaper alternatives might be. So make sure to check this one out. For the time being, I'm just gonna be testing this out so I won't be activating it. And next, what I'm gonna do is what I suspect a lot of people will do when they install Windows 11 ARM on their Apple Silicon Mac, which is to go ahead and download and install Steam. So I'm gonna to go to the steam.storepower.com website by opening up the Bing browser within the virtual machine. Then we're gonna download and install the Windows version of Steam. So this is not the Mac version, we're gonna be installing the Windows version. And even though that this is a Windows 11 ARM virtual machine, we're gonna be taking advantage of the x86 64-bit translation layer, which is a bit like Rosetta 2, which allows traditional x86 applications to run on Apple Silicon hardware. So I'm gonna press the install button here and this has gone ahead and installed Steam and we're just going to go ahead and download and install this Windows version of Steam and log in as normal. And what I'm going to do is to log in with my Steam account. So we're now logged into Steam and what I'm going to do is to download and install various games which run through this. So now basically we can download and install various Windows versions of games and just be aware that many games will not actually work that well. It all depends on the way that the game is coded. So even though the parallel system says that we can use DirectX 12, we're actually limited to DirectX 11.1. Also many games which are too modern won't actually work very well. So we're not going to be able to run games like Cyberpunk 2077. So if you're interested in running modern AAA titles like this, then make sure to check out my crossover tutorials. However, one of the big advantages of Parallels is the fact that many older titles actually work way better through Parallels than through any other method. So here we have the Windows game Black Mesa, a 32-bit DirectX 9 game being emulated through the Windows 11 ARM translation layer being run in a Windows 11 ARM virtual machine on Apple Silicon hardware. So it's amazing that we can see advanced 3D graphics at all. And what I'm gonna do is do a little bit of a playthrough of Black Mesa just to show you how it performs. And as you can see, the performance isn't too bad considering the fact that we're running this in a virtual machine. Loading of levels can be a little bit slow. There is stuttering and there are some graphical glitches here and there if you look closely. However, this remains a very playable experience and really the only way to play this Windows game on a Mac. Next, what I'm going to do is show you how to pair up controller on Parallels and get it working with a game like Batman Arkham Origins. So here we're going to add a Bluetooth device. We're going to go to the Parallels Control Center and then go to Devices. And then we're going to go ahead and configure devices here. So we're going to share Bluetooth devices with Windows. Click Allow here. And what we're going to do is to add a Bluetooth device to macOS. So I've got an Xbox One controller here, which I'm going to turn on. And then 
we're going to go ahead and pair this by pressing the pair button at the top. And then we're going to add this under nearby devices on the macOS side. So that's now connected. And if we go back into Windows, you can see that the controller's already been shared with the game itself. So that's automatically working. Here we're going to go ahead and play straight away. So here you can play pretty much flawlessly with the controller. You can see the analog sticks, the controls are all working correctly. So here I'm pressing Y to counter and it's pretty much working very nicely. So Batman Arkham Origins, the DirectX 932-bit game, is not the only one which benefits from being run in the Parallels Virtual Machine. Other games that crossover can't handle work really well under this system. For example, the game Castlevania Revamped, which is an open source remake of the original Castlevania game made in the engine Game Maker 2. Game Maker doesn't really work that well under Wine, but here I'm able to play it pretty much flawlessly, even with a controller. Another cool fan-made game, Bloodborne PSX, is a demake of Bloodborne built on the Unreal Engine 4. Again, doesn't play nicely on crossover and Wine, but it works nicely through Windows 11 on one parallels and can even run at a 120 fps with a controller also parallels is a great way to play minecraft bedrock so of course you can play minecraft java natively on mac os however if you want to play minecraft bedrock which is the same version of minecraft that consoles use then you can easily download and install this through the microsoft store and you'll get access to the marketplace to realms and you also get controller support as well and Parallels isn't just for gaming. Windows 11 ARM can actually run many applications far better than on macOS. For example, the Windows version of Excel has many features that are not possible on macOS. Just download Microsoft 365 through the Microsoft Store and get access to the more powerful version of Excel. And Parallels also supports a really neat feature called Coherence Mode. So if we press the blue button at the top of the Parallels window, it'll switch the Windows applications within Parallels to behave more like Mac applications. So here for example, I'm running the Windows version of Excel and it behaves just like a Mac window on the Mac desktop and I'm running it alongside Safari on the right. And it even gets its own shortcut on the dock as well. So anyway, that's my tutorial on how to get Windows 11 ARM working as well as possible on an Apple Silicon Mac. If you have any follow-up questions, then make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.